Thanks for joining me. So I got some questions and all and uh, from some wonderful men in a Bible study. And it says, how can you tell if God is talking to you? <laughs> yeah, how can you tell? Well, I'd like to take a stab at this. It's not going to be exhaustive. You know, it's not going to cover everything. But anyway, so uh, let's just give you some bullets. Maybe not in any priority way. I'm not, gonna, I'm not planning this or practicing it or whatever. Um, you know, I'll just react to it. So, yeah, how can you tell if God is talking to you? Well, I would suggest a number of different things to, to help. Um, and there's probably more, like I said. So anyway, one, or not a one, but a bullet. <laughs> and uh, this, is, uh, this is one thing, is that, hmm, familiarity. There you go, familiarity. Okay, this is a really good one, actually, because um, as you get to know someone, you get to hang so with someone, um, you get, you actually get to know the voice. You know people right now, if they called you without knowing the number, they're calling from a payphone or whatever, um, or wherever, and then they just, they call you, you know, oh, hi, you know, exactly that voice. Why? Because you've been hanging out with that person. You know that person. So, you know your children's voices, you know your relatives, best friends, you know what I mean? So, familiarity. So, the way to get, so that you don't get deceived and duped, and you can be deceived, even the elect, the Bible says, can be deceived. You have to be careful. Jesus warned about false teachers, false prophets, and everything else. But you just hang out with them. Uh, think of John 10. Jesus said, My sheep know my voice, and the voice of the stranger they will not follow. Even sheep know the voice of their shepherd. So why? Because they've been around the shepherd for a long time. And so when the shepherd's voice calls, they, they recognize it. Animals recognize it. So you can recognize God's voice and Jesus' voice if you hang out with him. And that's praying and waiting on him and worshiping him. So there's one, familiarity. That's a good one. All right, here's another one. And you, a lot of you may already know how, what, what these are, but that's okay. It's a good review. And that is Bible. I'll just do that. Okay, Bible. If you, uh, if you know the Bible... God's voice will never, ever, ever contradict the Bible because it really is a word of God. I know, I don't know who's, who you are listening to this. You might question all that, but go into figuring out whether the Bible's reliable and true and all that, and you'll find out over really good research, re real, real research. It's hardcore evidence, and I think I have it somewhat in my some of the videos, but. Um, just seriously, the Bible's the word of God. So God doesn't speak out of two sides of his mouth. He speaks the truth. And if you know the Bible, you're going to know what isn't his voice more and more. And as a baby Christian, God's really protective of you. But you have to be careful even as a baby Christian. The devil's not going to wait till you grow up and then start attacking you. So you have to be cautious and careful. Hang out with him a lot. That's a lot of prayer and spending time with him and get his word in you. Like, put it in, put it in, put it in, so that you can actually recognize, wait, no, 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 I know that Bible verse over there, what that, what that person's saying or what that voice is saying, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, I could tell you one quick story of the enemy tempting me to do something of a miracle, trying to do a miracle type thing, which wasn't of God and was tempting God. No, I'm not going to tell you that whole story in this case, but I'm just saying the Word of God was right there. And, uh, oh, uh, and by the way, when I was young at that point, God happened to lead me to talk to a, a, a mentoring type person, my uncle. And uh, what happened is um, you have uh, people, godly people, who will, uh, can help you. And the Bible says in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So if you're not sure if you're hearing the right voice, share it with godly men and women, especially those who've been at the, in the Lord for a while, because they've hung around him for a while. They happen to know his opinions and values and all, and they know what truth is. And so, yeah, that's important. Um, nothing particular order, because I just thought of this. It's the Spirit of God that is put in you right there who will help lead you. This should be above people, but I'll just put it in. I'm just randomly talking here. The, the anointing of him that you have the anointing that you have received of him this is first John chapter 2 abides in you and ye need not that any man teach you now balance that with everything because we need teachers but he's saying what's truth and what isn't he goes on and explains that 
So the Spirit of God is a Spirit of Truth. Jesus called him the label Spirit of Truth. That's a beautiful title, Truth. So Satan is a liar and a deceiver and a liar, you know, John 8. And, and, and the Spirit of Truth is from God. So when you've got the Spirit of Christ in you, you have more of a chance here. But you still have to put them all together. You weigh it out. And so the Lord will help you. And there might be sometimes, it, like, I'll go back to this one again. There might be sometimes that it, it's, you really kind of need, am I really hearing from God? And then the Spirit of God and then will help check you, pause you. Say, wait a minute, I'm not sure if that's God. Uh, other things, is, I'll give this one. I am just, just thought of this one. Experience. Sort of back up to this one, right? <laughs> Experience, which means... Um, as you get growing the Lord, you'll get more experience of knowing what's God's voice or not. It is like when God literally speaks to me and uh, I'll just tell you one story that just happened last night at two o'clock a.m. I'm in my office. I know it's crazy. Two in the morning. And uh, and the spirit of Jesus Christ literally spoke to me. And I haven't had that for a little while now. He speaks to me all the time, but not that sort of radical. It was radical because it was down here, deep down here in my spirit region. It wasn't in my head, that's for sure. And I heard him say, I can't remember. Sometimes I have, literally, I have exact quotes from God. Like I could quote you exactly what he said at times, like highlighted times in my life, word for word. This one was, I just sensed, and it was an impression, but strong words, an impression, can't quote it, but he basically was revealing to me that, he, I already knew this, but it was so sweet. I cried right here in this chair. <laughs> I said, Lord, thank you, thank you. I went on and I, I'm getting emotional now because Jesus literally should, made sure I knew for sure that Jesus Christ did raise from the dead, resurrection. I already knew that, but it took me down deep into a, a, he really made sure that I'm secure in that. Because the enemy would like to come at us, you know, darkness and doubts and like spiritual darkness smothering us, attacks. I've had all sorts of attacks, but this, the, <laughs> like, he really spoke to me and he just wanted to whisper that. It was a whisper. It's a, like a still small voice. It wasn't the earthquake, wind, fire, like Elijah, you know, God spoke to Elijah and all. It was that really beautifully, a subtle, very soft, very soft. That and I, I like when, like I love how Jesus will grow as you grow. Sometimes you may have big demonstrations. I have big. I have had big demonstrations of God in my life, dramatic. But the more I grow in God, I think He wants. He may still do the dramatic, but a lot of times He wants to get us so we're just faith, 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 faith. Like your faith is this way, just rock solid. I've got too many experiences and there's that experience too many times. But there's a time where you, he just wants you to go by faith. What he told you, maybe it's 20 years ago. Now, I think I know he's still leading me, but there's these times where God just speaks to you. So that voice is known. And it's, that's the other thing, if I can say this, most of the time, and it's not always, but because I, I could write a book literally about the various, the variety of ways that God has spoken to me. And maybe sometime I'll give you that variety. Maybe put in a, if you really want to know, I'll give you a list of those that he did this this time, he did this this time. But um, your spirit is usually where God speaks. Like the spirit of God will speak to your spirit, you know, like that. Meaning, it's a deeper sense of it. So, how do you know God's voice? It's down in here. It's not just a thought. The enemy comes at us with thoughts. He does. He doesn't. I don't. As I think about it, he never speaks to my spirit. There's a difference. See, the experience of God's uh, walking with Him, your spirit. How do you get that stronger? How do you get it so your your you, you can hear and your spirit it becomes more in tune to that voice because like waves are going right here sound waves radio waves tv waves but we're not tuned in so you get close to god you pray a lot you pray read the bible a lot what happens is your spirit is built up i love acts 20 where it says i commend you to the word of god and his grace think about it what i'm saying the word of god and his grace which is able to build you up he goes talk about giving you inheritance and all after that build you up praying on your most holy faith 
building yourself up in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Ghost, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, Jude. So your spirit gets like stronger, buffed. And then what happens is you're walking by his spirit through your spirit in the combination that you're walking as a spiritual person, not a fleshly carnal um, senses person. And then you'll get more and more of the word of God. And faith grows when you hear the word of God. Faith comes when the, you're here by hearing the word of God. And it all just works together. And, and you just get, uh, you get, you know God's voice. You can tell the difference. Um, other ways is in that experience, I will say God literally does sometimes through circumstances where you have no control of them. You think you're supposed to get this job, it shuts down. Like what? You lose your job. What? You know, various things. And then he has something else for you. This is where trust comes in, faith. And uh, so experiences along this line, but he, he speaks through circumstances. The problem is Satan can too. He can set up circumstances. He has traps up there, certain people, certain things that he's planning. He's trying to scheming to try and trap you in something, some temptation. So he plans for you to meet this person. And God allows that so you can be tested, so you can grow in those times. Um, actually, actually, remember, literally the Spirit of God led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So God will allow you. And, and then I guess we can pray more and more, lead me not into temptation. <laughs> and uh, I think that's a feeling of sense of like, lead me so that I can handle all the trials and temptations, but I don't want to be led in certain temptations. Others he may want you to go through. His will be done. All right. Um, you know, just know, I, I just thought about the will of God. When you know the will of God, basically, and something that comes against the will of God, it's not God's voice. And then over time, you'll, you'll kind of be able to discern what is truth and what is error because you live in such truth when you're obeying god all the time you're living in the light it's first john you're walking in the light when you walk in the light you can see wait a minute that voice is not of god and you'll be able to tell all right i think that's good i could continue trying to think of some other stuff but i think that covers it pretty well god bless you thanks for asking the question